In this video, we're going to be learning about probability. Throughout this video, we're going to be covering the following topics. We will first look at the definition of probability. Second, we're going to be looking at the formula of probability. Third, we're going to look at some examples of probability. Fourth, we're going to show some different ways to express probability. Fifth, we're going to look at the independent versus non-independent events in probability. And sixth, we're going to be showing how to get accurate probability values with coding. So let's get started with our probability definition. So probability is basically a chance that some event will happen. For example, what is the chance of flipping heads on a coin? And probability is used all over the world for many different things. And sometimes it can be a very tricky topic. So now let's look at the formula for probability. So the, basically the formula for probability is the number of ways a result can happen divided by the number of possible outcomes. So for example, if we have a dice, there's six different possible outcomes. We could either roll a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, or 5, or a 6. And let's say that we're trying to roll a 1. So our, the number of ways that a result can happen is 1, and the possible outcomes is 6. So the probability for getting a 1 on a dice is 1 over 6. Now let's look at another example for a coin. In a coin, there's two possible outcomes, to either get heads or to get tails. So it's a 50-50 chance. So the number of ways an event can occur is basically 1 over 2 because we can either get heads or tails and the possible outcomes is 2. So these are just some quick examples of probability. So now let's see the different ways that probability can be expressed. So we already know that probability can be expressed as a fraction but probability can also be expressed in a decimal and also as a percent. So for example if we go back to the coin we had 1 over 2 as our fraction so that means our decimal will be 0 0.5 and our percent will be 50%. So these are just some other ways of expressing probability. So just before we get into the independent events of probability, we're first going to be looking at 0 and 1 of probability. So 0 basically means that it's impossible to get. So for example, rolling a 7 on a dice. So we know that it's impossible to get a 7 because there's only numbers from 1 to 6. So the probability of getting a 7 on a dice is 0. But on the other side, 1 is 100% and it is certain that you're going to get it. So for example, getting a number between 1 and 6 on the dice. So we know that we're always going to get any number between 1 and 6 on the dice. So it's 100% that we're going to get it. So it's certain. So now let's go over independent events and non-independent events. So basically, the probability of two independent events is the product of probability of event A and probability event of B. So basically, our formula is probability A and B is equal to probability A times probability B. So to calculate independent events, we just have to multiply probability A and probability B. So for example, on a dice. So what are the chances that we're going to get a 1 and a 1 on two different dice? So we already know that on our first dice, we have a 1 over 6% chance of getting a 1. And on our second dice, we also have a 1 over 6% chance of getting a 1. So now that we know that our probability A is 1 over 6, and our probability B is 1 over 6, now all we have to do is just multiply them. So 1 times 1 is 1, and 6 times 6 is 36. So the chance of getting a 1 and 1 on, our, on two different dice is 1 over 36. So now let's go over independent probability versus non-independent probability. So independent probability is basically does not affect our sample space, and non-independent probability does affect our sample space. So for example, if we have a box with six marbles in them, and three of them are red, and three of them are blue. So what is the probability of picking a red marble from the box? So we know that it's going to be three out of six because we have three red marbles and three blue marbles. So in total, we have six marbles, and the probability of getting one is three out of six. So now let's say that we took one red marble out, and we put it back in. So our probability still hasn't changed because it's still three out of six. So to get a red marble, is still going to be 3 out of 6 because we put that marble back in. But now let's say that we took that red marble out, but we never put it back in. So now what's the probability of taking out a red marble from the, from the box? So now since we don't have one of them, we know that it's going to be 2 out of 5 because now we have 2 red marbles and 3 blue marbles. So in total we have 5 marbles, and to get a red marble, we have 2 chances. So that's independent probability versus non-independent probability. So now let's go over how to get accurate probability. So let's take the example of the coin again. 
So if we toss the coin, we have a 50-50 chance of getting heads or tails. But if we do, if we flip the coin 10 times, it's not always true that we're going to get 5 heads and 5 tails. Sometimes we might get 10 tails and 0 heads. Sometimes we might get 7 tails and 3 heads. So it's not always going to be 5 heads and 5 tails. But if we repeat that same process a million times, then it's going to get really, really close to 50%. So basically, the more and more you do it, the more accurate your probability will become. So that's basically how you can get accurate probability. So now we're going to be moving on to our coding part of this video. So essentially what we're going to be creating is a Python program that will help us to keep rolling two dice until it gets one and one. So some rolls might take 10 tries and some might take 30 tries and so on. And we're also going to be looping this value in order to get closest to one over 36. So if you remember from the beginning of the video, if you roll two dice, the probability of getting one and one is one over 36. So we're going to be trying to achieve that goal in this Python program today. So I'm going to do a quick test run of how this program will work. So I'll explain what this code does in just a bit. So right now I'm just going to run this quickly and let's open this up in the side here. So if you look in this example, we can see that it takes 102 rolls to in order to get one and one. So all these other tries were some other number. And finally, in the 102nd try, we got one and one. So basically the probability of us getting one and one in this try was one out of 102 or basically 1%. But we know that this isn't accurate because the actual value should be one over 36. And it also, if we remember, we also talked about that we need to do millions of tries in order to get the correct value. So we're gonna be doing that later on as well. So let's get started with seeing what the code actually does. So I already have all the code over here. I'm just gonna explain what it does. So let's start with the top. And so first we're going to be importing random and this will help us to get a random number from one to six. And then here we're going to be creating two variables. One is the total count and the second one is the range of numbers. And we're going to leave this as one right now and we're going to be increasing that later on. And then over here, we're going to be first creating a for loop and this will help us to specify the number of times we run our test. So then inside of this for loop, we're going to be creating a while loop and this while loop will keep running until it meets the criteria of getting two ones rolled. So for example, if it gets two and six, then it'll roll again until it gets all the way to one and one, as we saw in the beginning part of this video, as we saw in this example here. And then inside of this while loop, we're creating a counter for the number of rolls that we did. So this will just keep on counting the number of rolls we do. So if one is incorrect, then it's gonna count as one, then two, three, and so on. And then we're gonna be simulating random rolls for the six-sided die. So basically for the dice one and dice two, we're going to be randomizing the number between one and six for both of them. And this will keep generating random numbers. So it will give us these values over here. And then over here, we're going to be displaying all the rolls that we show. So if we go back to our example here, we can see that we get dice one is four, dice two is three, dice one is five, and so on. So this is just going to be showing us our actual values. And then once our criteria of one and one is met, then we're going to be breaking this wild loop here. So if dice one is equal to one and dice two is equal to one, then we're gonna be closing this while loop. And then once that's done, then we're gonna come down here and we're just gonna be displaying our count info. So we're first gonna be showing how many times that we looped and then we're gonna be showing the total amount of dice rolls. So we're gonna be counting all these up and then we're gonna be showing them here. And then down here is where our actual probability values come in. So then we're just gonna be first printing out probability of rolling one and one. And then here we're just going to be calculating and showing the change in probability and we're just going to be showing the numbers and same thing for here. So now that we know what the code does, let's run this program to see what happens. So let's just run this here. And we can see this time it only took us eight tries to get one and one. So the first time it took the dice one got one, but the dice two got four. And the second try dice one got one and then dice two got two. So our probability is one out of eight or 12.5% chance. But if we remember the actual probability should be one over 36. So the way that we need to fix it is by increasing the amount of times that we actually roll the dice. So if you remember, the more you roll, the closer that you'll get to your actual estimate. But the less you roll, then it could be anything. If you remember the heads and tails, if you, roll, if you flip it 10 times, you might get 10 heads and zero tails. So th this is basically the same thing. So the, base, the more times we do it, the more accurate our results will be. So if, instead of putting one here, if we range this to 10, then if we run this now, then we should get closer and closer to uh, 36. 
So as we can see now, we did it 10 times, we looped it 10 times. So basically it, went, it rolled 10 times until it get one and one. And then we got 247, I'm um, 249 rolls in total. And then our probability increased to one over 25 or 4%. So now we can see that it's getting closer and closer. So to get this even closer, let's try to make it 100 now. And now if we run this, so it's gonna basically run this thing 100 times. And we can see now that we rolled, we looped it 100 times here. If you go down all the way, we can see that it looped 100 times and it took 3,526 rolls in total and we got one over 35. So this is extremely close to our actual value. So you can see the higher we actually roll, the closer that we get to our actual probability. And if we run this, if we make this like the biggest number, if we make like a million, then it's gonna get exactly to one over 36. So just for our computer's sake, I suggest not to go over at least 10,000 because it might take a lot of time. So we're gonna try maybe 3,000 will work. So now let's run this and it's gonna keep doing it until it reaches 3,004 loops. So it's just gonna run this a few times and this might take a while. And finally over here, so we run it 3,000 times and we got this huge number here. We got 108,457 rolls in total. And then see if we look here, then we got exactly one over 36 as 2.8% chance. So this is basically, so the higher you go, the exact close it will become to the probability. So in conclusion, that's basically it for our coding part. If you guys enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe because it does take a lot of time to make these videos. Also make sure to leave any comments regarding to the video if you do have any. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.